Hey there folks, welcome back, and today I'm going to be talking about the Conservative leadership election again. Because whilst the Conservative Party doesn't have a leader, Theresa May is still Prime Minister to some degree. But anyways, let's talk about the people who are going to be likely to replace her come the end of next month. Now, we've got 10 confirmed candidates. Uh, you can see more about them in the BBC article. I am linking down below. Um, and they are in alphabetical order. Michael Gove, Matt Hancock, Mark Harper, Jeremy Hunt, Sajid Javid, Boris Johnson, Andrea Leadsom, Esther McVay, Dominic Raab, and Rory Stewart. Now, what's interesting is they'd upped the amount of nominations from two. That's how many nominations you needed to get into the... Uh, Conservative, the Parliamentary Conservative Party's ballot um, to eight. And about four of these candidates didn't have publicly the eight prior to, well, yesterday. So they must have gotten the eight through some other way. Um, these are Mark Harper, who had seven, uh, Andrea Lebson, who had five, Esther McFay, who had six, and Rory Stewart, who, like Harper, had seven. I find it interesting that. Uh, the two female candidates had the two lowest volumes of public support. And also publicly known are their seconders, which are also quite interesting ones. So you've got Gove had Nicky Morgan, um, you had Damian Green, former Hancock, um, pa Liam Fox backing uh, Jeremy Hunt. If you look down further down the order, you've got Liz Truss backing Boris. Um, got Gary Streeter and Ben Bradley backing McFay, David Davis and Maria Miller backing Dominic Raab, and people like David Gork seconding uh, Roy Stewart. Now we've got the, um, we've already had the One Nation Tory girls caucus. I was about to say couscous then. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired and I'm thinking about food. Uh, <laughs> and some interesting points from that. So it appears that Boris's aides opened the door uh, when Boris was speaking so that journalists would be able to hear it. Journalists aren't allowed into the One Nation caucus. Uh, it's only Conservative MPs. It was interesting to hear that, well, uh, Nicholas Sobers apparently had his head in his hand when Boris was speaking. The uh, grandson of Churchill? <laughs> it's weird. Churchill's own kind of legacy hate Boris, but Boris seems to think he's a self-appointed new Churchill. Yeah. It's fascinating for certain. Now, also, a lot of these are quite local, quite southern. You have um, Surrey Heath for Michael Gove, you have South West Surrey for Jeremy Hunt, um, Oxbridge and South Ryslip for Boris, um, Isha and Walton for Dominic Raab, Forrest the Dean for Mark Harper. Then you have people like uh, Rory Stewart, who's Penrith in the border. Now, I don't really know who's going to get through. I'm not a Tory party member, a Labour party member. But it's always interesting to talk about these candidates because each of them have got interesting track records in their own. And what it seems is out of these 10, six of them have somewhat recently admitted to uh, smoking some kind of, or injecting, or otherwise consuming, some kind of um, illegal drug. Most of them are cannabis. Um, Gove admitted to cocaine, <laughs> and Rory Stewart admitted to opium. Of course, Rory Stewart's one wasn't actually in the UK. But this is something that I found fascinating. I don't know whether it's um, whether it's actually people trying to seem like they're more human. Stuart is and Stuart is. Oh, I was checking across Afghanistan. But it, it makes me wonder when people like you've got um, Jeremy Hunt going, yeah, I've smoked marijuana. It makes you think, why are you admitting now to like smoke? cannabis, marijuana, whatever. Why are you admitting now to doing cocaine? Because a lot of these things, like Gove and cocaine, were public secrets, really. Um, much like with George Osborne. It makes people like they're trying to make themselves seem less... less... inhuman. Make them seem more relatable. 
then you have to remember these are the people who want to keep these drugs illegal and have obviously managed to figure out means in which they've been able to possess them and consume them illegally uh, whilst uh, other people are being arrested. It, it shows this kind of disparity between the people in power, the people at the top, the people with the money, and everyday people on the streets. Now, I'm not going to admit to having consumed um, any illegal drugs, because I haven't consumed any illegal drugs, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating to uh, to see these people go, yes, we're people of the people because we've done illegal drugs. We don't get caught because we're above the law. That is why I, Dominic Raab, am going to close down Parliament to make sure that I can get a no deal Brexit through. It's, uh, it's laughable. It's almost fast, it's almost something out of the thick of it, except for the fact that it is more extreme than something out of the thick of it. Now, if people already know my opinions on some of these candidates, uh, you can check out other videos I've done on the channel before about them. I just thought it would be quite interesting to talk about who has finally been carried forward, and one thing that appears to be a major talking point in this leadership election. At least it's naughtier than the fields of wheat, though. Okay, I'm done now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.